Hi everybody! Happy Saturday. I'm gonna make sure everything is working here on my iPad really quick. All right, looks good. Let me know if you guys can see me and hear me all right before we get started. Super excited for today's project, our Ice Melt Love Potion. It's gonna be lots and lots of fun. All right, awesome. I see some people jumping on. Hello, welcome. All right, let me know where you are watching from. We can all get to know each other as we wait to begin. I'm also gonna start preheating. I might preheat it a little bit, but I'm gonna start preheating my rose gold ice melt as well while we wait. All right, how's everything look guys? Everything sound okay? Let me know. I have my iPad set up down here so I'll be able to see your comments once I turn the camera down. All right. Hey Becky, how are you today? Hi Sharon. How's it going? Happy Saturday, guys. Teresa, how are you? <laughs> okay, so let me know if you guys are going to be working along with me today or if you are going to be uh, watching and then playing later. I have my love potion here that we are going to be making. All right, so all semi isomalt and then a nice images label. And you could so easily change up the um, colors for this too and do a different color potion if you wanted to, but our new rose gold I thought would be so perfect for the color of the potion inside. Oh, awesome. Sharon's going to be working along. Sharon said, hi, Michelle. Hi there. Mom Michelle is here too, and Dad Mike is here too. And we have my very special assistant who's in the studio as well today. Minnie is going to be supervising for us. <laughs> you want to you grab it? Dad is uh, supervising the supervisor I'm right now. I'm supervisor today. <laughs> Say hi, Minnie. <laughs> I know, we miss you too, Sharon. <laughs> and he's like, what's going on over here? She's looking at all the ice melts on the table. <laughs> Sharon says, Steve says hi too. Hi, hi Steve. Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Sharon. We miss you guys. We're ready for another retreat, maybe. I know. <laughs> Sharon says hi, Minnie. Minnie says hi. She just woke up from a nap, so you can see she's a little sleepy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Awesome, awesome. Carolyn says hi. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hi, Jenna. All right, perfect. So we'll get started here in just a second with our Isomot Love Potion. Sharon says, ready for another retreat, too. I know, I can't wait. All right, perfect. So, yeah, we're going to be making our love potion for anybody who's just jumping on. All right, this is our new heart bottle mold as well as our new angel wings mold. So I'm going to be showing you how I use both, how I get the two-tone layering inside for the super realistic glass bottle and putting it all together and uh, painting it as well. I thought this would be perfect for Valentine's Day since it's almost Valentine's Day, just a little over a week. Are you guys baking anything for Valentine's Day? Do you have a lot of orders? Are you making anything for you or for someone special? Let me know. All right. Hi, Grandma Barbara. Gigi says hi to Minnie. She says, <laughs> Minnie says hi back. Becky says, bye annual retreats. You never know. <laughs> We were tossing around an idea of some mini classes in the summer, maybe? Yeah. I think it would be fun have a little mini summer uh, getaway. It's just so long to wait an entire another year for a retreat. I mean, it really is. I'm already ready for another one. <laughs> All 
right. Perfect. So I'm going to tilt my camera down and then we will go ahead and get started. Um, and we will be going over all of how to make the love potion. But again, uh, you guys can change this up if you want to use different molds, if you want to use different decorations, different colors. I would love to see your creativity too. So I'm going to show you all the techniques for how I put mine together and then make sure to post pictures of your piece if you're following along or if you're doing this later so that I can see all of your beautiful work, um, either on your page and tag me or post them in the Torch team too, because I love to see it in the See Me Torch team. And please share. All right. Oh yeah, please share share this broadcast to guys share it to any sugar groups that you're in all right let's see here so I just want to make sure that we are in a good positioning here how does that look guys move over a little bit so I'm more centered all right yeah, you can use any bottle. That's really the beauty of this, too. I, um, we have the new heart bottle just because I wanted it to be specifically love potion. But um, you can use any bottle and use a love potion label. It will be really, really cute, even adding the wings or adding some other decorations. And then I'm also going to be adding the diamond um, to the top as kind of the stopper. But you can use another mold that you have as well. A little brooch would be pretty there, some different shapes, gems. Even the crystals, I think, would be really pretty, kind of jutting out the top for maybe something a little more um, kind of witchy and a little darker be cool to have like some rough crystals coming out of the top so definitely customize this to what you have and whatever bottles you want to use because I know a lot of you guys have our um, other potion bottle molds that came out at Halloween so um, I've been trying to think of tons of different things to do with those bottles because there really is so many ways that you can flip this for different holidays and different occasions okay and please let me know if there's any other questions or any questions as we go along with the play date and I will be happy to answer them as we work all right so first off i have my ice malt melting i melted it um a little while ago for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals so remember our pre pre-cooked semi ice malt is uh ready to use it's already been tempered that's why it's already in the hard candy form so all you have to do is melt it down no temperatures no recipes nothing just melt it in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a liquid it's basically just a sugar-free hard candy. So at that point, when it is melted, you can mix in color, you can mix in flavor, um, you can paint on top of this, which we're going to do a little bit of as well, uh, or you can also use it pre-colored. So the actual color for the potion that we're going to be using is going to be our new rose gold. You can see I've used a lot of this bag um, with making my pieces, but um, the rose gold is going to be beautiful with this project because it's just a really rich color, um, and it looks totally different when you pour it in different shapes too because of the gold tones in the pink. So so it's just like a really nice vibrant rose gold which I thought would be really pretty kind of contrasting with the clear above the bottle part the actual glass of the bottle and then we're going to use the uh, gold ice malt for all of the decorations but you can also use some clear and paint it if you wanted to uh, do it that way but again customize this to what you like all right so I have my ice malt I'm going to probably uh, that should be good I think so like I said, 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals in the microwave until it's liquid. You can see that beautiful sheen on the surface already. Now remember, when ice malt is melted, it's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 150 degrees Celsius. So very, very hot. You want to make sure you are wearing your gloves while working with ice malt. Um, don't follow my bad example. Usually I recommend a cotton glove and then a nitrile or latex glove over top of that. That way it's going to buffer the heat, but every keep everything nice and clean with the nitrile glove on top and uh, keep anything from sticking so definitely wear your gloves don't be intimidated by ice malt because it is not even as hot as ovens and stoves will get when you're working with them and you've learned you know how to work with those safely and comfortably while you're baking and cooking so as long as you're taking the proper precautions you're paying attention to what you're doing and being careful wearing your gloves um, you won't have any problem when working with ice malt it just takes some practice to build up your confidence just like anything else new all right hey carol how are you today all right, so we have our mold here. Let's move this out of the way. Set that aside. So with our bottle mold, and with a lot of our bottle mold, not all of them, um, they have this sleeve on the outside. So you either have the cardboard sleeve just to help it in, uh, hold it into place and keep the seams in place, or you'll have the mold itself. Because of the shape of this one, we just found that the sleeve is really helpful for this shape. Um, but if you have one that didn't come with a sleeve, it's okay. It's meant to be like that. Um, so you can use it however it came in the packaging. Just make sure you don't throw away that cardboard sleeve if you have one, because it is there for, um, for a reason. But uh, for the hearts, we definitely do use the cardboard sleeve. So you can see uh, our really pretty heart bottle here. It has like 
a little bit of a flatness to it. It's not totally 3D. And that really helps with defining the heart shape. Otherwise, um, it can be a little bit too rounded. And when you look at it from the front, it may not come across quite as much as a heart. Um, so that's why we liked the slightly more flattened sort of look to it. All right, we have three rubber bands and we wanna double wrap those rubber bands to get them nice and tight. So on the cardboard itself, one towards the top, one in the middle and one at the bottom. And before I, I'm putting the rubber bands on and the sleeve on, I just made sure that my uh, mold is lined up so that the seams are all matching. There's nothing off about it and there's nowhere where the ice mold can seep out. So I just kind of look at it from all sides, feel it, make sure that all the seams of the mold are lined up, okay? And this will go for any of our um, bottle molds or any of our two-part molds like this. Um, this is kind of how you're going to start it. If you don't have the sleeve, you'll put the rubber bands directly on the mold itself. All right, so we have our rose gold here. Now, it depends how much you want this to be filled up with your potion, how much you're going to pour into it. Um, maybe you want the potion to be full, hasn't been drank yet, um, but maybe you want the potion to be empty or maybe just have a little bit of residue at the bottom, um, a little bit of the potion left. It might kind of uh, tell a story with your piece that you're going for. Um, you can even, you know, have it spilling out if you wanted to. You could kind of make like a little puddle and when the piece is cool, you could lay it on its side so that the potion's spilling out of the bottle. There's lots of different ways that you can go about sort of filling this, um, but we are going to be filling this up just kind of a traditional fill of where all the color and the ice malt, um, the rose gold ice malt's on the bottom and then the top part we're going to do clear to sort of emulate that emptiness of the top because I really like that two-toned. You could fill it up with all one color and it would still look great, but I think that two-tone just really brings out the realism in the bottle. All right, so we're gonna fill this probably about two-thirds to three-fourths of the way up, just stopping shy of the neck. All right, and Amy and Evelyn are here. Hi guys, how are you guys doing today? All right, there we go. So I used almost all of what was in my bowl. Okay, just pouring that in. Now I kind of dripped a little bit on the side, um, on the neck of the bottle. So as that cools, I'm just using my silicone tool or you can use a toothpick to clear that away, to clean that up so that none of the rose gold is gonna get into my clear. Once I fill it the rest of the way up, then you wanna make sure that you don't tilt this or move it too much because you don't want the rose gold to kind of go in uh, on the areas that you want the clear later. All right, so easy as that. We're just going to let that first layer cool completely and then we are going to pour in our second layer of clear now if you wanted to get even fancier with this and make it look like there's different layers of different colors in the bottle you could definitely do that just pour as much as you want of each color let it cool all the way in between though because if you pour them one right after the other they're going to start to marbleize which might be a cool potion look especially if you're using um, more like transparent colors mixed with opaque colors but they are for sure going to mix and there's not really a ton of way you can control that perfectly so um, that's why we want to let this cool so we have a very distinct line between where the potion is and where the clear of the glass is going to be now you can also do this piece hollow if you wanted to um, by filling it all the way up and draining it out like we do with some of our other projects but for this one we want to torch away the bubbles on the surface to make it look really hyper realistic so that's why we do it solid rather than filling it up and draining it out okay all right it's just because silicone can get a little bit of a bubbly surface just because silicone breathes so that's why if we want it to be crystal clear and super smooth on the surface we always do it solid all right, so we're gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna put my little fan on, so if you hear a little hum in the background, I'm just gonna blow my fan over it as it cools, just to speed up this process. But it depends on how warm or cool the temperature of your room is gonna be, how long you will leave that to cool. Um, in the temperature of my room, which is, it's not overly cold, but it's definitely not warm in here, um, it's probably going to be about, I would say, 20 minutes or so at least before you want to pour that second layer, uh, just to make sure that they don't mix together. So we're going to make some other pieces while that is setting up. All right, so let's see. So next up, I'm going to start um, melting my gold again. I had preheated it, so it's still a little bit soft but it's definitely not pourable anymore, so we're gonna pop that back in. Remember, that's the beauty of ice malt is that you can remelt it over and over. There's no limit. As long as you don't burn the ice malt, you just can melt it again and again as it gets cool just to reanimate it or any extra pieces that you make that you don't end up liking or you don't end up using them in the end, you can just melt them back down as long as they haven't been glazed yet. All right, so with that gold, we're going to be using our wing mold and our diamond mold for the decorations on the mold itself. All right. 
So uh, with the wings, uh, I absolutely love this new wing mold. Uh, we have two different sizes of it. I ended up using the larger ones just because I wanted them to be really, really um, just kind of the focal point of this jar and to just really look like, since it is kind of a heavy jar, I wanted it to look reasonable that it could actually lift, you know, take flight and lift off. So I liked the bigger ones, but you could use either one depending on the size of your jar. You can also use them either wide or up and down. So I'll show you kind of the differences once they're poured and they're cooled. You can kind of see it in the mold how these go more vertically so for you guys view these will go more vertically and then the larger ones you can also um, how they're set you can flip them sideways so you can do them more up and down like angel wings or you can do them more side to side like they're actually in flight all right check on our gold here perfect so far, we're using semi-opaque colors because it is a luster dust, so you're not really going to see through it. I'm bringing it to a boil just to make sure it's pourable, but I am still not making sure I don't stir it or anything like that to get any bubbles in the piece. When we do the clear later for the second layer of the bottle, then we'll definitely want to make sure we get all the, boil all the air out, which I will uh, show you once we get to that clear. All right, but for mostly for opaque colors, I'm just getting it to a pourable state. Okay, now we're also going to make the stopper for the top of the bottle. And I was talking a little bit about this before in the beginning, but you can use a lot of different um, molds for that. I decided to use our 3D diamond mold because it has a really pretty sort of faceted look to it and a faceted top. But you could also use a little brooch if you wanted to. You could do more of like the natural crystals um, that we have, like the sugar gay crystal molds that we have. You could do really anything that you wanted to in the top of that, make it a little bit more perfect. You could also just use a sphere and the top would be pretty or, um, you know, maybe hand sculpt something like another little heart or use another mold that you have um, or you can leave it open if you wanted to and have it sort of you know a little bit of it pouring out or maybe um, dripping down the sides you could add like some little drips of the rose gold going down the sides if you wanted it to look like it was spilling out um, you can also put a cork in the top of it you know use a little bit of ice melt or fondant or gum paste and just kind of fashion a little textured cork and paint that so there's lots of different ways that you can stopper it but I wanted it to kind of look very elegant uh, and very sort of sophisticated in the look of it so that's why I decided to use the diamond in the top and both of these pieces are going to be with our gold. So this is just gold luster dust mixed in. You can mix in your own color if you would like to, either using an edible airbrush color, so a water or alcohol based color, or for metallics like this, you can use luster dust. So luster dust is going to be a powder that you can mix into the ice mold, or you can paint on top, or both, like we're, what we're going to do, just to really amplify the color. And uh, that way we can get that beautiful metallic sheen. The one thing you never want to mix into ice mold is gel color, though. You want to make sure the gel color does not get mixed in because it will break down the texture of your ice mold and not allow it to dry properly. All right. So I'm just going to pour my large wings. And I'm just going to kind of go slow, make sure it gets in all of that detail. I'm not worrying about filling it all the way to the top because I don't want to risk overflowing in the thinner areas. So all I'll do is take my silicone tool, or you can use a toothpick, spread that into the little points of the feathers. Just like that. And then I'll pour my next one. They're not overly thick, which means they're going to have a lot of texture and dimension, but they're not going to be super heavy or take too long to cool, which is really nice. You could also pour them thinner if you want to, and that goes for any mold. You don't have to fill the whole cavity of the mold up. You can just pour enough to cover the bottom. And then for fine details of color, like if you wanted to make these shaded a little bit, or maybe if you're doing them more in like a ivory color and you wanted to add a little bit of shading, like some browns or anything more realistic, you could do um, some painting afterwards. So I just kind of pour a base color. All right. And then we're also going to pour our diamond here. So I'll pour a couple of these. There's a large one and a small one, but the large is going to fit the top of our uh, bottle the best. And with this mold, I just slightly underfill it so it doesn't get sort of a poofed top. Since ice mold has a lot of surface tension, especially as it cools thicker, I don't want it to build up at the top, so I usually stop before the top a little bit. All right. If you have any little bubbles sitting on the surface, again, this is solid, so you don't see them quite as much, but you may see them if this is going to be the top of your piece. So I still am going to pop any surface bubbles while it's nice and liquid right now, just lightly with my blowtorch. All right, now these pieces are much, much cooler, or smaller, sorry, so it won't take as much time to cool. I have a little drip that I went over the edge, so just like with the bottle, I kind of pick that up with my tool. 
I'll set those in front of my fan too, just to help them, but it's not going to take very long at all for those to cool down. The wings, because they're a little bigger, will probably take about maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then the diamonds will probably take uh, probably 10 minutes or so, just because they are deeper than the wings. All right. Perfect. So let's go ahead and test our bottle. So not with your finger. Um, I'm using a silicone tool just to poke at the ice malt and make sure that it all feels okay. It's still a little bit pliable, which is okay. You just don't want it to be totally liquid. Like if I tilted the mold, it shouldn't be sloshing or moving. Um, so, and it does feel like it's at that stage. So I'll be able to melt some clear and fill it the rest of the way up. All right. So let me grab my bowl of clear here. All right, are there any questions so far, guys? Let me know. Becky the oh, thanks, Becky. All right, perfect. So we're gonna fill this up with clear just because I wanted it to um, be really different than the rose gold to have a really nice contrast. But you could do a tinted color of a bottle if you wanted to do like a pale pink or a pale purple. I'm sure that would look really pretty um, over the top of the rose gold. That's kind of up to you. You could even do a pearl or something if you wanted to, but I just wanted it to look a little more realistic with the clear on top, so that's why we're doing the clear. I know a lot of people have all the different bottles. It would be pretty to kind of have them on one of the uh, frames. Oh, and like, like a like display? A stand. That would be really, really pretty of like all the different tinctures and yeah. uh, potions. That would be really cool. I love that idea. We're going to be using the label too, the Love Potion label that we have on our site, but you can also customize the label if you wanted to. So you could um, change the names of it. You know, if you have your own edible printer, um, you can change the names of the potions. You can change the colors and the designs of them to match your theme. I just went for kind of a vintage sort of cute Love Potion look. Um, there's two different color variations of it too. There's like a vintage-y um, sort of yellowed one and then a more brighter um, light toned, but the wording and everything is the same on there but how cute would it be to customize that and put like initials or something on there um you know if you're making a valentine's piece you could always put like the valentine's initials on it and make it really cute and custom for their little cake or their display all right so i just melted my clear and i'm going to pour that clear all the way up to the top nice and slow all right and there we go so I just filled it the rest of the way up and now we'll let that cool. That's probably going to take at least 45 minutes or so to cool down, depending on how cold your room is again. So I have one pre-made already. I'll pop some of those little bubbles there. So I'm going to set that off to the side so you guys don't have to wait for that. And we're going to grab our pre-made demo magic here, guys. All right, so that one is totally cool. I poured that about two hours ago or so just to make sure there's lots of time for it to cool. At least I started pouring it, but remember we wait in, kind of in between in those layers. Okay, so I'll take off my sleeve, and then I like to find the two seams on either side, and I push down and away from those seams to kind of get the suction out. But they'll want to wait to take those out, because it'll Absolutely, slump, right? yeah, it's going to slump if you go too quick, so the rest of the demo, um, just kind of watch, and then um, in a couple of hours you can finish yours up with all of the decorations and everything that you want. All right, it's probably no more than an hour. I know it's a lot colder in a lot of parts of the world than it is here right now in Florida, so um, you probably will cool a lot faster than I am today. All but right. we get to use those beautiful blankets Carol gave us. We do. Oh my gosh, she gave us the most so amazing sweet. soft blankets at the retreat. We love those, Carol. Thank you. All right, so we have our two-tone here. You can see that there are some bubbles. Let me flip it over. Sorry, I always forget you guys are upside down. Um, so we have the, uh, bubbles on the surface that we're going to get rid of. It looks kind of cool. So if you wanted to leave sort of a bubbly texture, especially if you're going for like, uh, under the sea, maybe it's like a, uh, you know, a mermaid's, uh, potion cabinet or something like that. You could leave them, but I'm going to torch those away to make sure that they are going to be nice and smooth on the surface. And it also helps it look to look, look makes it look a little bit more clear. All right. So I'm just making sure this is nice and cool because it still has some warmth to it and we're about to add a lot more heat. So just kind of using my fan to help cool this a little more. And we're just going to go in very light layers to the surface. Some bubbles are more intense than others. Some of them are deeper, so it may take multiple layers and that's okay. But we're just going to torch a little bit. 
and I'm just doing the front. I'm not really going too much on the underneath or the sides right now because I don't want it to start dripping. If you have a flat surface, it's just going to kind of sit in one place. So I'll go anywhere that's facing sort of upwards. And what's really neat about this with the pearl and the bubbles is it actually leaves a little bit of light reflection where the bubbles were, which I'll hold up in a second, uh, in the rose gold. So you're going to have this really cool sort of bubbly potion look um, that you don't even have to do any work for. It just does it automatically for you. It looks really, really neat. Okay, I haven't gotten every single bubble out, but this whole section down here towards the point is all actually smooth, but you see those really cool sort of rising bubble marks. I just think that looks so awesome, and I even got a little bit because I probably poured this a little bit too soon, but you see how the pink sort of started to go up into the clear? I just think that that looks so awesome and realistic because it looks like a bubbling potion. Alright, so sometimes you get happy accidents, right? Alright, so I'm going to cool in between torching to make sure that it is nice and solid and we don't accidentally melt anything. I can feel my torch is running out a little bit because I forgot to fill it, but if anybody ever needs to fill your blowtorch, I have the butane fuel with the long nozzle here, okay, and I have a YouTube video on how to do this as well, and you just fill it upside down until it starts kind of spitting and overflowing. So I'm just pushing down in, you can hear it, there we go, you kind of heard it starting to spit, and that's it, you just let it settle for like a minute or two before you light it again, let the um, butane dissipate from around the area. Now I'm going to flip this over and do the other side. You could do this in any order that you want to, but I'll just turn my fan away so it's not blowing on the flame. And I don't try and rush this. I don't do too much at once if it doesn't want to do too much. Because you don't want to melt it, like I said, or burn the surface. You don't want to mess up the color or anything. a little bit more and you just repeat that process in light layers if you accidentally melt like the lip on the top of the bottle or anything like that you can use your palette knife to just sort of re-imprint it or smooth things out as well you can press it into your flat mat if it starts to slump a little bit Sydney, hmm. Becky wants to know how many butanes you, you, you went through at the retreat <laughs> I think we went through three or four bottles for all of those classes but we did a lot of torching so I don't think that's too bad Alright, so you see how now that both sides are torched, you can see through it a lot better to the other side, which is really, really pretty. Right. Now I'll do a little bit on the sides. Usually I'd stand it up for this, which I actually probably can't do now. the top of the little heart dip and you can spend a while doing this I'm not going to take too much time with it just because I don't want to bore you guys but you can kind of continue going and going and going with this until it's as perfect as you need <clears throat> All right. Becky says you needed a hard hats and hammers <laughs> I know right for many of the activities, actually. Yeah, it seems like we always need hard hats and hammers for something at the retreat. You know, mix that with torches. Boy, that's a fun time. <laughs> oh, gosh. And Carol loves how the rose gold's coming up the side of it. Yeah, it looks so cool, right? I just love this rose gold color. It almost looks magical. Yeah, and I wanted it to have a very sort of fantasy look. I love sort of potions and... You know, things like that, so I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a pretty sort of antique version rather than the um, more, you know, spooky potions that we did for um, Halloween with the potion bottles. But all of those bottle shapes would look so cool with all of them, the yeah. love potion for Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. And if you didn't have the rose gold, you could use pink or purple or, um, you know, another metallic color. Even gold would probably be pretty like a liquid gold potion. 
Oh, yeah, Becky said it'd be great for Mother's Day, too. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. You could turn this into, like, a perfume bottle, too, if you wanted to, Very instead easy, of yeah. um, a potion, you know, just by changing what label you use, maybe adding, like, a little hand-sculpted um, pump to the top of it. Carol says, kind of like a vaporizer look. Yeah, exactly. It really does. It's, to me, like a Harry Potter feel. To yes, it. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted this to have sort of an elegant or like an opulent look to it. Alright, so just letting that cool a little bit more. That should be good. So we'll set that off to the side to let it cool the rest of the way, but I'm really liking how that's looking. Like I said, I didn't go totally perfect on the um, torching just because I don't want to take too much time with it for demo purposes, but you guys get the idea. Becky said it looked great with the tall quartz top. Ooh, that, that would, would be, be so pretty. I, it took a, a lot of deciding to figure out what kind of top to do on this because um, I, there were so many cool ideas. And there's tons of inspiration photos of, like, potion art online, too, that you can kind of draw inspiration from. Obviously, you don't want to copy anything, but, you know, just kind of getting inspiration of different styles and also, you know, different time periods, too. We'll have a little bit different looks to them. If you wanted to go more art deco, that would be cool, so... Lots and lots of choices. It took me forever to decide what colors and what shapes I wanted to do on this, but I knew when I saw the wings that I wanted to do um, a love potion with the wings because I just thought that would be really, really pretty. All right, so our wings are cool. Our diamonds are still warm, which is funny because these seem so much bigger, but they're actually a lot thinner than the diamonds, so we'll let the diamonds cool a little bit longer. All right, so look how beautiful these wings are. There is tons of detail in the wings right now, but um, because they're all one color, it's a little bit hard to see the detail, which is why I like to paint them. Okay, we are going to clean up the edges a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to flip them over face down on the mat, and I'm going to just lightly trace the edges with my torch to smooth them over. And that's just for me spreading it in the mold. But it's very easy to clean up, so I'd rather kind of spread it a little bit rougher and then fix it later, because it's super easy. They say, beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, Yay! Carolyn. Thank you. All right. Girl left the mold. It is. It's cool. Yeah. I think it would be neat with the edible lace in it. Oh, that would be really, really pretty. Yeah, because the detail of it is just crazy. All right, so our options for how to place the wings are either going to be sideways, which is ultimately how I decided to do it. So just to show you, um, you could do it sideways, kind of like this. Or I think I did mine a little bit lower, like that. Uh, or we can also flip them around. So if you don't want it to be out, you can also, I'm going to switch them opposite, and I'm going to put them, I'm doing this upside down to me, so I might have done that wrong. Hang on, i got to do it up to me. That's correct. Yeah, I did it correct. <laughs> I'm doing it opposite, and then also the camera's opposite, so I'm trying to make sure it's all right. But you can also have them kind of going down and put them face down like that if you wanted to. That looks really pretty, too. It just wasn't quite as grand, and I wanted this to be really grand. It's like okay. Victoria's Secret Yeah, wings. more like Victoria's Secret Wings, exactly. So... I have the ruffled edge or like the feathered edge to the bottom and the smoother, more like the bone of the wing at the top, personally. Carol says it'd be a great base to add the hand uh, fold feathers. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So if you wanted to add even a little bit more life to them and a little bit more movement, you can add in your own decorations on top and use it. Yeah. Like a base. I think the really reason I idea. like it is like the lace mats are lovely, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing something flat, but this has the body to it. Exactly. So it'll stand out a little bit more, more like a ball relief sort of style mm -hmm. that is flat enough to go on the cake, but still has a lot more shape to it. All right. That over there, I think our diamond should be ready to come out. And I have a little trick with the diamond as well. So we're going to unmold it. These take a little bit of coaxing to get them out of the mold, so don't be afraid to really kind of rip them out. Um, I want to make sure that these are going to get nice and cleared, but they're not going to be um, bubbly on the surface or lose their shape. So I have a little trick that I like to use. Okay, we're going to use the uh, metal palette knife, and I'm just going to slide it up the sides because normally we would torch like we did with the heart. We would torch the diamond to get it smooth, but if you torch this, you're going to lose all of those sharp facets. So what I'm doing is I'm going to heat up the palette knife. And we're going to slide it up the sides to smooth this out. 
Ogilvy loves it, and Lori says hi. Hi, Lori. Happy almost Valentine's Day. A little over a week till Valentine's Day. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to, you're going to have a little bit of steam, <laughs> wow. but surprise. So I'm just sliding it up the sides kind of quickly of each one of the facets. And depending on how fast you work, normally I don't hold it up in my hand. I set it down, but depending on how fast you work, you may be able to get every side. Don't touch you with it. <laughs> there we go. And it just kind of cleans off the bubbles without actually losing the facets. Oh, that looked really cool. <laughs> Our little magic trick of the day. You may have to wipe off, because you see it's smoking again, you may have to wipe off the palette knife on your silicone mat in between torching, because you don't want to burn the ice melt on there and caramelize it, because then, if, especially if you're doing like a clear diamond, you'll have burnt ice melt um, that you're kind of spreading on. This is gold, so you're not really going to see it, but you want to get that nice and red hot. Somehow I missed this. Becky said an embossed smart sheet on the back of the wings or a printed cello sheet. Ooh, I love that idea. Yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. So now it's just going to give you a really nice sort of sharp look to your diamond. With the gold, it's not quite as vital to do that because it's not see-through. But if you had a clear, um, you know, it would be the difference of now how our bottle looks compared to when we first pulled it out. It's a really big difference as far as bubbles. All right, so we have our topper, we have our wings, and we have our bottle. So I think it's time to start putting it together, and then we'll add the label, and we'll do a little bit of painting. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this very cool. towards me. Thank you. Okay, so first we pick which side we want as the top. I think I want that side. This is all subjective. We're gonna torch to stick together. Okay, so you can put the wings all the way together or you can separate them depending on how big you want the wingspan to be. I'm going to have the top of the wings kind of uh, aligned with the top of the bumps here on the heart so that the stopper sticks up just a little bit from them. And I like to do this sort of flat so that I can see how exactly it's gonna sit. And you can have them lower or higher. You can even angle them up or down a little bit. So just make sure they don't go too far down that they're going to exceed the um, ground, essentially, because when you stand this up, you don't want anything going lower than the base. Otherwise, it won't stand up. You have to display this on its side or stick it up high to something like it's flying away, which could be really cute too. Imagine doing a big, tall, tiered cake and having a whole bunch of these flying up the cake. That's very Harry Potter. <laughs> very Harry Potter, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do both of these at the same time. So I'm just going to torch both of the wings and then torch the back of the bottle. And just stick it down and on. And I can kind of see through it to see where it's sticking, so that's perfect. Right. There we go, and I'll just leave that to cool for a little bit. You may want to stand it up at this point just to make sure that they're sitting the way you want it to, upright as well. I was just thinking that you've been doing a lot of cookies this week, and I wonder um, how beautifully the cookie would bake in the wings. Oh, it would probably be really, really pretty because the yeah. sculpted gingerbread would take that, um, the recipe would take that texture so nicely. Yeah. Especially if you left it in the mold to bake instead of taking it out. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to try it. Uh, yeah, I think I do have to try that now. All right. Lori loves Harry Potter. <laughs> Me too. And now we need a mini heart bottle. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. <laughs> It's so hard to decide kind of what sizes to do because sometimes you want the little, sometimes you want the big, but this one would be really perfect for a cake topper or kind of a centerpiece, so that's why we went a little bit bigger. You could use the mini um, bottle that we have, the mini potion bottle yeah. that's only like this tall or so, and you could do little ones around it too, kind of have this one as like a topper, and then little ones with the small wings and have those so they're a little bit oh, lighter yeah. weight. That, those are the actual flying ones, and then these be, you know, or this one be kind of the one at the top. That way it saves you some weight. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> All right. But yeah, the wings are very Harry Potter. I love um, from the first book and movie, the keys that were flying with the wings mm -hmm. on it. So you could use the wings for like the keys for a Harry Potter cake, have them flying all over the cake. What about for the snitch? Yeah, oh yeah, for the snitch. Perfect. There's lots of wings in Harry Potter. 
to make a, a headwig, make it in, like a snowy white and paint them with black. Use the little wings for that. Alright, so now we're going to add our diamond topper. I did the diamond upside down, so the flat side is down against the bottle. So I'm just picking my favorite side here. Usually warm to warm sticks better than warm to cool. My diamond's still a little warm from torching, so I don't need to torch that one. No Not pressure, they, they can see you. <laughs> I know, right, if it's centered? <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. All right, so there's our little diamond stopper. Super pretty as is, but I want to make sure the texture on those wings are seen really well and um, the facets on the diamond. So we're going to paint that and we're going to add the label as well to it before we glaze. But I love, love, love how that's coming out so far. Move my hand so you can see the clear a little bit better, maybe. All right. Perfect. So let's add our label on first. I'm going to grab some piping gel and a paintbrush. Sharon says beautiful. Thanks, Sharon. Okay, so um, the label that we're using is one of ours that I have um, available pre-printed on the website. This is in an icing sheet, so you could also use this in like the cello sheet, but remember it's going to be clear because um, we have the clear ones. So you would be, it would be more like a label on a real bottle, like a lot of them are clear. It just wouldn't stand out quite as much, but if you're doing like a solid color of ice malt, it would pop better. This one, since I did the two-toned, I wanted the totally opaque background, which is why it's on an icing sheet, but I do have it available to print on any of the sheets, um, just like all of our others. So uh, that one is our Cupid's Love Potion number nine, uh, and we're going to just put a little bit of piping gel. I already cut it out and peeled the plastic off of the back, and we're just going to use some piping gel, or you can use any edible glue that's sticky to stick that right on. All right, so if it's number nine, what happened to the love potion, the first eight? I don't know. I guess those were the trial ones. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what happened when you drank those? Carol says, great project to make. <laughs> Carol Ann says, lovely. Yeah, and how pretty would this be, um, you know, for Valentine's Day coming up, but also if you made these in chocolate, they would be super Ooh, yummy little chocolate yeah. bottles. You could put a filling inside. Or you can fill it with something that you have to break. Um, you know, the smash uh, cakes and pieces are really, really nice. You could also do it in chocolate and put layers of cake inside. The mouth is, you know, pretty wide, so you could do layers of cake inside and filling if you wanted to. Sandra said it looks so cool. Thank you. And Becky's going to make hers, the heart bottle, black glitter and clear, Ooh. and skull and crossbones on it, because you know me and Pirates to the end. <laughs> so you're going to have a little bit of a creepy love potion. I love it. That will be cool. <laughs> Carol is thinking black glitter wings. That would be really pretty with the texture of the wings. I put it on the medium skull. Oh, I love <laughs> it. I love it, guys. I think I've seen a vodka that was a skull head. That would be cool bottle. for like the stopper even would be cool with our tidy skull. Oh my if you want God. to do the stopper in the top. Crazy. A little bit more of a warning love potion than a, you know, pull you in love potion. <laughs> yeah, what if there was one... Uh... I'm trying to think of all the potions on uh, Harry Potter. Now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cindy loves it. Yay, thanks, Cindy. So I'm just mixing some of the wedding gold from the sugar art. You can use any luster dust that you like, but I love the sugar art. Um, plus, it's going to match the color that's mixed in uh, to the ice malt. And then I'm using some of the uh, color solution, which is their um, thinner that's made for the dust, which works really, really well with ice malt. But you can also use some alcohol or some extract, whatever you prefer to mix your dust with. And I'm just going to paint that on, and you're going to see it just catches the reflection really nicely. You can even shade this a little more, which is what I did for the other one, to make it look a little bit more antique -y. I'll leave this one gold. I, you guys know I like to kind of give you guys different options. I'll leave this one more the bright gold, so you can see the difference between the two when I hold up the one I had previous. Just so that you can look at something a little bit more bright and shiny and new. Or you may want it to look like it's kind of been on the back of the shelf and nobody's used it in a while and give it a little bit more of like a story to it. Making this always also reminds me of um, Shrek. I think it's the second one when they go in and they find the, all the potions in the room with the fairy godmother. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and Carol and Becky said yes to the skull stop stopper. I yeah. Know, I know see some of those. Definitely. Uh, Ash Suzanne says beautiful. Thank you. And she loves the luster dust. All right, you could probably already see that even from a distance, it's really making that pop nicely. All right. <laughs> Carol didn't get the bottle? I bought 
box you did. <laughs> Are you sure? Check your box. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll let that dry a little bit, but I'll hold it up in the meantime so you can see. So that's with just the bright gold on it. You can see it really, really makes those wings pop and it brings out the texture so beautifully in them. All right, and I really love it for the topper as well, the stopper um, in the top of the bottle. You could even go around the label if you wanted to, or even paint the base if you wanted the base to look like it was metal, you know, rather than the whole thing being glass. Um, you could definitely do that. And then compared to the one that I aged a little bit, you can see that one. All I did is I just took a little bit of brown petal dust with some of the color solution and I just edged the diamond and I edged the, um, just like the texture of the wings themselves. So it's a very subtle difference, but it just kind of made it a little bit more vintage looking rather than super light and bright and shiny and new. I like them both, but I see um, the bright gold one, mm -hmm. like um, maybe put that on Christmas ornaments or something. Yes. Oh, wouldn't that be pretty? Yeah. Oh, angel wing ornaments. Yeah, yeah, I love that would be super it. pretty. Thank you. Amos is gorgeous. Sharon loves the project. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> That's <super funny>. Gorgeous. <laughs> All oh. right, and then of course with our um, ice melt projects, we always always glaze them with the clear edible glaze spray. So. Um, just a coat or two. I make sure I don't do it on my silicone mat or near my molds or tools or anything. So I just have like an area that I cover completely with plastic or paper uh, and I spray these front and back with just a light coat. You could do that even before you put the label on if you want to. It won't hurt it either way, but if you don't want the label to be a little bit shiny, you can do that before. And that will just lock out the moisture and humidity um, from the ice melt and make sure it doesn't get sticky or cloudy. So I mean, this bottle that I made, it definitely isn't quite as shiny as the first one, but probably for someone who didn't know that, like the client looking at it um, you wouldn't really be able to tell I mean I made this probably a month ago maybe more than that because I did it before I think I did it before the retreat you had um, the last play date maybe oh yeah that's right so I did it over a month ago uh, maybe a month and a half ago and you can see it's all super shiny and nice still um, and you can keep these as keepsakes or you can use them for all of your edible projects so just make sure you spray it so that it doesn't get sticky or cloudy and it'll stay nice and clear and glassy I've just had this one up on my shelf um, not in an airtight container or anything just kind of displayed up on my my background of my studio here. Evelyn's gotta have those wings. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cool, right? And Carol loves both. Both beautiful. Thank you. Let me move the paper towel so you can see it a little better. All right. So I have them flying away here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so you can definitely use these as cake toppers and centerpieces. If you were going to put it on the side of a cake floating, you can use, um, I would definitely use something heavy duty like dowels or a bunch of skewers dipped in ice melt and stuck to the back of the piece. So I would just dip them in ice melt and stick a whole bunch so you can have a prong to put in the cake. But you would need a really dense cake or ideally a one fake tier that's a dummy to make sure that that's going to hold in because these are quite heavy. Unless you decided to do the bottle hollow, which would still be very, very pretty. It would just have a little bit of a bubbly surface on it or if you did more of like our mini bottle then that one would be a lot less weight um, so you can support it a little bit easier. Becky will work for mold. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Teresa loves it. Carol loves it. Thank you. That's oh so cool. thank you guys. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. I can't wait to see all your variations because yes. you guys always have the best ideas of variations of how to change these up. So I'm really really excited. Make sure to post them in the See Me Torch Team Facebook group so everybody can see because I know it's always fun when we're all talking on here to see other people um, you know other people's projects that we had talked about during the live. So um, we do have the kit too. Um, I know like I said you could always use any different kinds of bottles but we do have the kit still discounted. Uh, all of our accessory kits and project kits are discounted, so it's 20% off everything that's included, and it has all the ice melt and the molds and everything if you don't have something um, on discount, so it does make it a little bit cheaper if you want to do this project exactly. And our anniversary sale is still going on. Yeah, that's right. We extended our anniversary sale, um, so it's 20% off seeing the ice melt right now, and we added all of the pre-printed sheets, so the icing sheets, transfer sheets, cello sheets are all added into that for this month of February, um, so just use the code SIMI, S-I-M-I 15, at checkout on cmecakes.com and you'll get 20% off of your ice malt and your pre-printed sheets this month. We wanted to extend it because we are having our Sugar Splash online competition, our virtual competition, which is so exciting. I hope you guys are working on your ideas and starting to work on your projects because it is open to enter. So you can enter anytime between now and I believe it's March 10th mm -hmm. uh, is the date to um, the deadline to submit it by. So make sure uh, that you get the, that in. We're doing that with icing images and we have 
so many uh, incredible judges and categories that you can enter and a grand prize of $500 cash. So make sure that you enter. There's no theme, but there are some guidelines. If you have to use a little bit of see me, you have to use at least a little bit of icing images um, and a couple of other rules and guidelines. And those are all on our website, but anybody can enter. It's virtual. So um, anybody has the opportunity to enter who wants to, and you can make anything that inspires you. There's no theme to it. Um, we're focusing more on technique and, um, you know, kind of, yeah, what inspires you and what you've been wanting to create. So awesome. And mom just put that on my profile in the comments. So make sure that you check that out. There's a tab at the top that says um, the Sugar Splash virtual competition or Sugar Splash competition. Mm -hmm. And it has all the it? guidelines. Yep. Did I read it correctly. Yep, exactly. Okay. So yeah, make sure don't send me pictures of your pieces, though. I'm not okay. a judge, but I just want to stay impartial. So make sure you don't send me pic uh, pictures or anything like that. Um, I will answer questions as long as they're vague. But as far as and technique Debbie and too. stuff. Yeah, and Debbie, don't, too. Don't send Debbie pictures. Yeah, don't send any of the sponsors or the judges um, any of your pictures because we want those to remain anonymous. Afterwards, though, you can definitely post them after all the awards are um, announced and everything like that, uh, which I believe is the 17th of March. Uh, you'll be able to post anything that you want of your piece. Is that piece. St. Patrick's Day? Uh, I don't know if it's St. Patrick's Day. I think it's right after. I'll have to double check that. I don't know. Gina, sorry, she's late. Hey, Hi, Tina. Gina. All right, perfect, perfect. Okay, so while the camera is still tilted, I left it tilted because I want to show you our next play date project. And um, I thought it would be easiest to show you guys flat. So um, I wanted to show you what we're going to do for the next live stream. I am really, really, really excited. And I know that I say that every month, but I am extra excited about this next one because I had so much fun making it and I can already see all of the different ways you guys are going to vary this. But our next play date project is going to be a cookie. And here we have our stained glass isomalt mushroom house cookie. Look how pretty that is. We have our top of our mushroom is all clear semi isomalt with a brand new cello sheet pattern in there. We're going to be making all of the details. We're going to be making, um, we have a brand new mold for the door and the window that I actually sculpted. Um, so it is, but it is a mold. We're going to be making all of the details for it. I'll bring it up a little bit closer and kind of pan it so you guys can see. But think of all the ways that you can change this up, right? You can change the colors and the themes. It's going to be super duper fun. Um, as you can see, it is a cookie. So we'll be working with some fondant, but you can also use modeling chocolate or gum paste if you wanted to. Or you can pipe it and flood it and decorate it that way if you wanted to, if you prefer that kind of um, look to it. But that's going to be our next free live play date. Um, that is going to be, what's the date oh, on that one? On. Hang on, I have a cheat sheet back here, but I, forget, <laughs> I always forget to look at it. Um... March 11th. <laughs> March 11th is the next play date. So that's totally free to watch, just like this one on Facebook. But we do have the accessory kits uh, online. The discounted accessory kits for this project are available now. The new um, pattern, the red and uh, white stained glass pattern is in there. The new door and window mold is in there um, and everything for the kit and everything like that. So we're going to be doing that at 2 p.m. on Saturday, March 11th, right here on the Sunny Cakes page. So super duper excited about that. All right, we also have our next Zoom class, which is coming up. Don't forget about Mr. King Triton here. Um, King Triton is a sculpted gingerbread cookie, so I'm really, really excited to make these and see all of your awesome King Triton characters come out. This is for all levels. Remember, you don't have to have any experience with sculpted gingerbread. Um, because it is very different. So we're going to be making this kind of bow, ball relief style uh, King Triton. It's all baked and we're going to be painting it. We're going to be making the background cookie or sorry, the background out of ice malt and the front is cookie and a whole bunch of techniques in there. So that one is going to be on February 26th. That one is through Zoom. So it's uh, more interactive, but it also comes with access to the pre-recorded version if you can't make the live class. So uh, he is going to be at 12 p.m. and you do have to sign up on our website to get access to to that one because it is through Zoom. So you'll be able to work along with us or you can uh, watch and ask questions and do it on your own time as well. All right. And then we also have a couple other um, announcements. Yeah, let me turn it back up now that we have our little guys all sit out here. <laughs> Becky says it looks like Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> that's not creepy. <laughs> not creepy at all. <laughs> all right. So um, 
We are um, do have a couple of other events that are happening this month, which I'm really excited about. Uh, on February 19th, we are bringing back Simi Bingo. Simi Twitch Team Bingo. It's been so long since we did bingo. I hadn't even realized how long it's been, but uh, we are back. We're doing bingo again. Virtual bingo, so anybody can participate. We're going to have... Hat. Yeah, bring your hard hat because it gets a little bit competitive, um, but we're going to have prizes. We're going to have a, a coupon code for everybody who participates, uh, regardless of if you win or not, and it's always so, so much fun. Uh, we do this in the See Me Torch team, which is a closed group, so make sure if you're not a member of the See Me Torch team that you sign up uh, because you do not want to miss this. We always have so much fun. So again, that is on February 19th. Uh, I believe it's at 7 p.m., but the banner is uh, pinned to the top of the uh, torch team so if you want to get your bingo card and save it in advance and then me and mom will be going live at 7 p.m i believe on the 19th so that we can call the numbers and have tons and tons of fun all right everybody seems excited about that awesome awesome Yay, fantastic it. All right. So, uh, and then we also have a couple of other exciting things coming up. I can't talk too much about them yet, but uh, we may have a really, really, really cool uh, cookie event that's coming later this month. So I'll have more info on that that I'm going to be a part of with some amazing, amazing uh, cookie artists, sugar artists. So make sure that you keep your eyes peeled for that because I'll have more info very soon. I'm working on some projects for that this week, um, but that's going to be towards uh, the later in the month. Uh, and then, yeah, make sure that you enter our virtual competition. Um, all of the information is on our website. Mom posted the link up there at the top. And I don't think I'm missing anything, am I? I think that was everything. I am I missing anything, guys? Hmm. <laughs> awesome. It was so much fun at the See Me Retreat, too. Um, it was amazing to see you guys. Uh, it was just such a blast. So thank you guys uh, for anybody who was there. Thank you for supporting us because we had so, so much fun. It was. It was incredible. It was. I can't even believe it. Uh, right. Do you Look want me to comments. grab that one little thing? Sure. <laughs> we'll do a little mini send off. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Teresa. I'm just looking through the comments now. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like the mushroom. I'm, I had so much fun making it. It was really hard to decide like what elements I wanted to do on it. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right, well, I hope that you guys have an amazing Valentine's Day, um, and uh, good luck with all of your baking that you may be doing, and Minnie wanted to say goodbye as well. Say bye, Minnie. <gasps> Look who's there. Look who's there. <laughs> all right, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend uh, and a great Valentine's Day, and Happy I... Happy Valentine's Day. We love you all. Yeah, we love you guys so much. Thank you for being our Valentine's. So uh, we will see you in the next live event, and until then, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.